That is one of my favorite songs, King of Glory, come in this place. I want to be with you. I'm so grateful um, that the King of King and the Lord of Lords is in our life in this season to help us to do everything that we need to do. Listen, we worship our God tonight. And we lift him up in this place. We make us name larger. That should be your sentiment tonight. King of glory, come into this place. I just want to be with you. Listen, I pray tonight um, that the word of the Lord um, will pierce your heart, but it will also inspire you on tonight to be encouraged, to begin to do uh, the things that I believe that God wants us to do in this season so we can receive more from him and we begin to be in a place with God, in alignment with God, where we can hear the voice of God consistently. Tonight, I want to dive right into the word. We are going right to um, the book of Mark chapter 11, verse um, 23 through 26 on tonight. And listen, uh, our uh, series that we're in on, on this uh, in this season is conqueror, that we are a conqueror. I want you to declare that over your life every single day this week, that I am a conqueror, because I believe that God is going to give you the courage the commitment, but also the courageousness to be able to complete everything that he's assigning to your life in this season. And so listen, listen, let's go into our message on tonight. Turn with me to the book of Mark chapter number 11. I want to start reading out of the King James Version at verse number 23. It says, Verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he shall, uh, those things shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Listen to the text tonight. Verse number 27. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe, and ye shall receive them, and ye shall have them. Listen to what he says. And when ye pray, forgive. This is what he says. And when ye pray, forgive. Um, uh, and when ye uh, uh, stand praying, forgive. If ye have an ought against any, that means Lottie Dottie and everybody. If ye have an ought against any, Forgive that your father who also is in heaven may forgive you of your trespasses. Verse number 26. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Verse number 24. Once more. It says, therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye shall receive it and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you of your trespass. If ye do not forgive, neither will your Father forgive which is in heaven your trespasses. Tonight I want to talk about the gift of forgiveness. And listen, I know sometimes... That when you begin to talk about forgiveness, it's a difficult subject because so many of us feel justified in how we feel. And it causes us to say to ourselves, I'm not really willing to give that up at this moment because I want to hold on to what I feel that was done to me. Uh, I, I want to hold on to that thing that I feel that, um, that, that caused me to feel uncomfortable. But I want to begin to talk to you tonight. Because there are certain things that we need from God in this season, and I don't want anything to get in our way from receiving from God. The text here tonight uh, begins to teach us so many things about our faith in God, our ability to speak. But when we begin to speak, that we have to begin to create an altar of forgiveness, that God will begin to forgive us also so we can begin to receive. Tonight again, I want to talk about the gift of forgiveness. Let's pray. Father, tonight we stand in great anticipation of a divine revelation out of your word. We pray tonight that the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, will come into this place and teach us all things. We need the wisdom of God. And so, God, we pray tonight that you would teach us out of your word, that you allow this text to be illuminated 
to begin to bless us as your people. We declare tonight that things are moving and shifting in our life. We're going to walk by faith and not by sight. We declare tonight that the favor is, of God is falling when we forgive. I pray to that person saying, Pastor, it's not that easy. I pray for that person saying, Pastor, I want, I want to release it tonight. I pray right now to allow the Holy Spirit to fall in our places on tonight that we can feel from you and our lives can be changed in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and thank God. Tonight's message is the gift of forgiveness. Um, people of God, tonight I want you to understand again that this is your season to conquer certain things in your life that God has commissioned you, but also that God has given you the strength to be able to overcome and to accomplish certain things that sometimes seems hard for us to overcome or to conquer. I want to I wanna be able to have empathy, but also bear witness with you tonight that, that sometimes the thing that God begins to ask us to release, uh, it takes faith to release those things. And I want you to understand tonight that when we begin to release certain things under the obedience of God, that the favor of God begins to fall in our life and the things that we begin to pray about begins to manifest in the season when we begin to release. I pray tonight that you will begin to understand and sense um, the, 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 the seriousness of, of, of this conversation, this teaching on tonight, because God has so much that he has stored up for you, but he wants you to begin to release certain things out of your spirit and out of those places where you begin to stop growing because because it was not it was not advantageous it was not it was not sometimes it it didn't feel good to let go and i hear the holy spirit saying tonight if you can let go i'm about to let go what you've been praying for i'm about to release what you've been desiring i need you to begin to ask me to come into your heart listen we need the holy spirit ask the holy spirit holy spirit come into my heart and sometimes I need to begin to release certain things that begin to cause me to be stay in, in, into a certain holding pattern that I don't begin to mature or grow in the things of God in which God has intended in my life. And so listen, I'll be the first one to say like sometimes forgiveness is not easy, especially when you feel like you have been um, um, done wrong. But I want you to begin to see this in a different dimension, in a different view tonight. Because I want you to understand that God has certain things and certain benefits uh, in, for your life. But God wants you to step into a different realm of maturity as it pertains to being a believer. But it's going to take faith. Hear me tonight. Faith is the substance of things that I'm hoping for. So, so Father, I'm hoping to release this tonight. I'm, I'm hoping to let go certain things that's been causing me to stay in a certain way. But I want to receive from you in a greater way. So God, I'm willing to trust you to release it at your altar tonight. And so people of God tonight, as you come on tonight, please do me a favor, share this tonight. Because this is going to break the strong man that's been trying to keep us in bondage. That's trying to keep us in a place where, where we, we're doing tit for tat. Where we're, where, where we're holding grudges when we're saying we're walking in pride and we're, we're saying I'm not going to let this go until they let it go. I'm not going to say I'm sorry. I want you to understand that your ability in this season to, to, to apologize, our ability, not just you, our ability in this season to apologize and get in right standing with God, but also in alignment with the word of God begins to catapult us into the place that God has promised so I want, I want to talk tonight to some serious folks that are saying, Pastor, I'm ready to go to the next level. And I, I need you to give me the wisdom that I need to begin to let go. And I want to talk to you tonight by, by, about the, uh, the, the gift of forgiveness. Sometimes we have to look at the things that we're trying to let go in a different dimension. And I want you to look at the, 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 the power to forgive as a gift that, number one, you're giving to yourself. Write this down if you're writing. It's not a gift. You're saying, Pastor, 
How I'm going to give them something else when they done already affected my life. Listen, I don't want you to focus on that because some people that God wants you to forgive, that God has already touched their heart to begin to do certain things in your life. But listen, we have to walk in obedience. We have to walk what God is calling us to do in this season so we can align ourselves up with what, what God's will is for our life. So forgiveness is not giving the person, the system, um, the, 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 the group, um, the, the thing, the, 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 uh, a, a gift is number one, giving ourselves the gift to begin to heal. When I give the gift of forgiveness to myself, I allow myself the process of healing. I'm going to go into this text tonight. I want us to be healed in this season. I want us to be made whole. Yes, we don't get it right all the time. Yes, we, 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 we mess up and we say the wrong things. We, we talk out of turn. Or we misspoke. Or, well, sometimes we get anxious and, and, and we begin to do certain things. And, and sometimes people are offended. But I pray tonight that we will begin to utilize the gift of forgiveness to release. Because listen, for some of us, it's, it's forgiving that father that was never there consistently in our life. For, for some of us, it's, it's, it's the relationship that we did not have with our, our parents that we desire to have. And that thing has been weighing on us for years. For some of us, a loved one has died, died crossed over to the other side. And we didn't have the time that we need to have the conversation. And so tonight, even if we cannot talk to them, I want you to have the power. I want you to give the gift of forgiveness to yourself. So you can begin to heal. You may not have the luxury of having the conversation. You know how we have, we have to ourselves. Well, I need to have a conversation. I, 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 we need to have the talk. You may not have the luxury, especially with, with, with 300,000 people have died uh, in, in this year alone through a pandemic. We may, we may not have the time. We may have not have the luxury of going back and going through the detail by detail. I want you to begin tonight to say, I'm going to release that thing that I'm going to walk in forgiveness, that I'm going to begin to give the gift of forgiveness in this season. If I can't give a gift, if, if I can't give a gift card, if, if I can't, if I can't do nothing else for nobody else in this season, I want to walk in forgiveness. Is that you tonight? That you can begin to ask God, God, allow me to, to begin to reshape relationships in this season because I want to walk in forgiveness. Let's go to this text tonight. And the text on tonight, we're in Mark chapter number 11 for those that are just tuning in on tonight. Mark chapter 11, verse number 23. Jesus in the text begins to talk to the disciples about faith. And he begins to allow the correlation of faith and speaking to a mountain and, and, and to correlate with speaking to him, but also begins to talk about the burden in between both of them. As he begins to open up, the burden is the mountain that he's telling the disciples that you have the power to speak to it. And when you speak to it, I will begin, your faith will begin to dismantle the mountain. Say with me tonight, my faith begins to dis dismantle the mountains in my life. You need to say that again. My faith begins to dismantle mountains in my life. Jesus goes on and begins to teach the disciples and begin to say, when you pray, I need you to stand in boldness believing. I'm going to read it in a second. I need you to stand in boldness believing and you can have whatsoever he pray. Then he goes on to talk about the next dilemma that we need to begin to utilize our faith when we begin to speak, when we begin to pray, to begin to shift our environment so we can align ourselves up with the will and the promises of God. He begins to tell the disciples, he says, when you stand praying, when you get into a sacred place of praying and you begin to ask me for all the pleasantries that you desire, you begin to ask me to open up doors and to shift things in your life. He says, while you're standing in the atmosphere of praying, while you're kneeling in the atmosphere of praying, while you're laying prostrate in the atmosphere of praying, he says, before you honor, I need you to release. 
I, I need you to forgive. I need you to let it go. I need you. I need you to not to spend the, uh, not, not a whole lot of time dealing with that. I need you to let it go. And he says, when you begin to pray, there's access to your father that you get that you will not get if you allow the dilemmas of the mountain or the, the, allow the, the, the dilemmas of, of forgiveness to get in the way of your belief system with Christ. I want to tell you tonight, it takes faith to forgive. Listen, in this season, I want us to begin to give the gift of forgiveness. Let me start by saying point number one. Forgiveness releases strongholds out of our life. I want you to hear this tonight. When we begin to forgive, it begins to release strongholds out of our life. It's a, a forgiveness is a gift for you that changes us. It's a gift for us that changes us. It begins to break the strongholds and the bondage that the enemy wants to be on our life so we cannot go to the next dimension. I want you to understand just as you're carrying baggage, walking to an air airport and you're trying to run, uh, your, 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 your ability to have the velocity to move faster is, 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 is eclipsed by the, the, the luggage or the baggage that you're carrying. I want to declare to you tonight, it's the same thing about forgiveness. When you begin to hold on to forgiveness and unforgiveness in your life, it begins to keep you from going into the velocity, uh, with, with, with velocity into the direction of your future that God has for you. So in the season, God is telling me to tell the people of God that we all, including Pastor Andres, need to begin to give the gift of forgiveness so we can grow in the things of God and that we can get to our destination so we can get into the place that God has for us. So when we begin to stand in prayer, that things will begin to shift in our direction. And I don't want anybody to be clogged up, uh, including myself in this season, from receiving everything that God has for us. It does not mean that we're ignorant. It does not mean that we're dumb. dumb. It, it means that we are in the will of God and God is causing us to rise to a different dimension when we forgive, when we forgive, so forgiveness causes us to change. It, it's, it's a gift to us. It begins to break the bondage and the strongholds of the enemy because the enemy wants you to be offended. The, the, the enemy wants you to feel betrayed. The enemy wants you to stay locked into that system that done you wrong. For the purpose of keeping you locked down so you cannot meet the tremendous future that God has over your life. Say with me tonight that I'm more than a conqueror. I want you to understand, people of God, again, it takes courage, it takes commitment, and it takes courageousness to be able to do this in this season. Hear me, people of God. Listen to what the text says. Verse number 23 it says, and verily, uh, let, let me go back up to 22. And Jesus answered and said unto them, have Faith in God. It takes faith to speak to every dilemma in your life. It takes faith to speak to a mountain. It takes faith to speak to uh, certain things that you feel like is keeping you stagnated in the season. It takes faith. It takes faith to pray. It, it takes faith to believe the word of the Lord. Listen, the Bible says faith cometh by hearing. As you begin to hear the word of the Lord tonight, I pray that God will begin to stir up your faith, that God will begin to inspire you when you begin to say, Pastor, I'm ready to let it go. I'm a, I don't know how I'm going to let it go, but I'm going to trust the Holy Spirit to give me the power to let go the baggage of unforgiveness. This is the season. I want you to give the gift. Of forgiveness. He says, verse number 23, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Jesus is teaching us 
and this pericope of text that if we have the courage to speak to the dilemma, that's why he begins to shift it from a mountain and says, uh, uh, but shall believe that those things, those things, those dilemmas, those issues in our life, we got to speak to them. Because when we begin to speak to them, it begin, re, begin to release us from bondage. It's, certain, it's, it's not always that we're praying and we're speaking about favor. It's certain things in our spirit, certain things in our character that God wants to speak to us that has been giving us resistance from receiving the promises of God that we got to speak over our life and says, God, I may not have the strength to let it go myself, but God, I'm believing and I'm praying and I'm not doubting in my heart and I'm believing I can have those things. Somebody say, I can have those things. I need you to put it in the comment section on tonight. I need you to holler back at your boy tonight. Say, I can have those things. There are certain things that God has prepared for you in this season because you are a believer. We understand as a believer, we walk by faith and not by how we feel. Sometimes we're not going to feel it, but we see it in our spirit. Sometimes we, 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 we don't feel it, but we see it in our knower. And God begins to give us the revelation of life. and begins to tell us that we can have those things. We can have those things. So somebody declare tonight, the enemy wants you to be depressed. He, he, he wants you to look at your circumstances as though it's overcoming you. But I want you to declare this word of the Lord tonight. That we can have those things when we begin to speak it. So we don't have to look at the dilemma that we're in. We can begin to look at the destiny that God is calling us to. Somebody, there's a destiny over your life to do great and mighty things. And so you cannot get stuck in the place that you're in. Because listen, God wants to begin to shift you to the next dimension of your life. Look what he says, verse number 23. I'm at the end of the B clause of it. It says, but he her should have whatsoever he say. I need you to speak some stuff this week. I, I need you to speak some stuff in this season. You may have not got what you wanted where you want it, but I want you to understand Habakkuk 2 and 2 says the vision is yet for an appointed time. The vision has a destination. It has a, it has, it has, it has a destination date. That is going to begin to be released. The Bible says, Hobeka says, wait on it. Wait on it. It's yet for an appointed time. You got to wait on it. The appointed time may not be my time, but it's the right time. It's God's time. And matter of fact, it's going to be my time when I receive it. Let me just read to you out of Hobeka real quick. Hobeka, uh, 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 chapter number two, it says, and the Lord answered me to and to answer me and said, write the vision. It's certain things in your life that you have been visualizing and it has not happened yet. He says, keep on writing it. Keep on speaking about it. Keep on living in it. You got to see yourself in that thing. Huh? Listen, he says, he says, he says, and the Lord said, write the vision, make it plain upon tables that he that may run that read it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Though the vision tarry, wait on it. Don't give up somebody. I'm talking to a church tonight. He says, it shall surely come to pass. It will not tarry. So some things that we're praying about in this season, I need you to loose your, your confession. I need you to begin to release the words out of your mouth and begin to speak over it. I don't care no system. I don't care no, 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 no emotion that I may be going to should not keep me from receiving what the text is tailored to teach us, not Pastor Hopkins. Jesus is talking in this pericope of text tonight, and he's teaching us how to speak. I want you to speak. I want you to speak it tonight. I shall overcome it. I shall walk in it. I got my degree. 
I got my certificate. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to somebody tonight. I, I got what God has for me in the season. Matter of fact, uh, it's, it's, I'm being attracted by what God has for me. Uh, the things that I believe in that God is going to be released to my life is attracted to my destiny. Why? Because I'm anointed for the season to carry the will of God in my life. He says here in the text, he says he shall have whatsoever he saved. Hurry along tonight to verse number 24. He says, and this is what I wanted to get to on tonight. No, 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 to, no another verse 25. But let me, let me start right here. He says, uh, he begins to reassure. He says, therefore, I say unto you that what things soever ye desire, you ain't got to negotiate it. You ain't got to freak out about it. Listen to what he says tonight. Whatsoever, what, what things soever ye desire. Some of you got some desires that you want and God want, wants to release it to you. But listen, you have to understand what the text is tailored to teach us. He said, when ye pray, number one tonight, I want you to put this tonight. I need you to highlight when ye pray, you got to believe. It could, it, could, it could be something impossible. It could be something that's over your head. It could be something that you don't have the money for. It could be something that you're not uh, um, totally understanding how it's going to happen because you don't have uh, uh, the money for it. But I want to declare tonight, if it's God's will, it's his bill. Hear me, people, God. And if it's God's promise that God will make the provision come to pass in your life, but you got to you gotta begin to open up your mouth and say, but you also got to believe. He says, you got to pray. You got to believe that you should receive them, plural, and ye shall have them. Some of your stuff that you don't have in this season that your question, the creator, has everything with your inability to pray consistently. So you have to begin to say, God, give me the mind to pray. And the enemy sometimes keeps us back from praying because he knows that your, that your prayer lock begins to unlock the keys to uh, for you for the kingdom of God. It begins to give you access to environments in the kingdom by faith to walk in that other people don't have the authority. Why? Because God promised it to me. He said I can have whatsoever I say. I'm a lender and not a borrower. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I want you to hear this tonight. Uh, he says that every place to sold on my suit foot to tread upon because I'm in the will of God. He said it shall it shall be mine. So listen there's some things that God wants you to pray and walk in it. He wants you to pray and believe in it because you're going to have them. But this is what I'm trying to get to tonight. Forgive me for, for hurrying on. He says here tonight in verse number 25, but when ye stand praying this is what I want to get tonight. When ye stand praying the text is teaching us tonight. He says, I need you to do one thing for me, for the father. He says, I need you to forgive. What? I got to pray and forgive. What do my forgiveness have to do with me receiving from God? Everything. I'm glad you asked. Everything. The, the gift of forgiveness begins to unfold in different dimensions. Hear me tonight. For you are not the perpetrator when you begin to release. I'm not talking about nobody. I'm talking about the text. When you begin to release what God has for you by saying, number one, God, I'm going to do my healing process by releasing what you have for me. There's certain things that happen in our life, that happen in our home, that happen in our childhood that we're carrying. And it's like a ball and chain that we're trying to carry into our destiny. And God is saying, you got to let that thing go. Uh, they, they wasn't there. They mistreated you. They walked away from you. They left you for dead. But you got to walk. Uh, and you got to release the thing because I don't want you to carry in the weight. I don't want you to carry in what you're carrying. I need you to release it. So he says in the text to the disciples, when you pray, when you stand praying, I need you to forgive. Forgiveness gives us the ability to heal. Hear me tonight. Uh, I want you to write this when you're writing to, down tonight. If you're writing, to, uh, writing down tonight, God told me to tell you when I was studying. He says, stop rehearsing the dilemma 
Stop rehearsing the drama and the disappointment. You got to stop rehearsing the dilemma, the, 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 the drama and the disappointment. Because when you begin to stop rehearsing the dilemma, the drama, and the disappointment, he's going to allow you to be determined. Huh. You, you, you got to be determined uh, not to let unfavorable moments to define you. You, you got to be determined to not to allow moments in your life that God is causing you to live beyond because there's a destiny greater than the dilemma. I feel God tonight. Huh? God told me to tell you, people of God, stop rehearsing every dilemma and every trauma and every disappointment. You, you, you cannot continue to feed what failed you in the past. You, you, you cannot feed uh, the, 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 the moment that, that, that begin to, to cause you to be scarred. Uh, uh, you you got to begin to release it. And God said, when you release it, I want you to be determined not to live in places of unfavorable moments. But I want you to release your faith to say, God, I'm going to go after everything that you have for me. I'm going after everything that you're releasing in my life. And I'm not going to be defined by unfavorable moments. Because forgiveness puts us on the frequency of God to release and to receive. Hear me, people of God. Forgiveness puts us on the frequency of God to release and receive. Listen, listen what it says tonight in verse number 25. He says, and when ye pray, forgive. If ye have any ought, any, any ought, no matter what it is, he says, release it. Because I don't want the dilemma to get in the way of destiny. So whatever the thing was, whatever it was, I need you to let it go. I need you to release it because I need you to begin to speak to the Father. He says, if ye have any ought, he says, forgive it that your father, which also is in heaven, may forgive you of your trespasses. So tonight, as we get ready to close and as we get ready to launch out into our future, I want you to I'll, I'll begin to launch out into your future with the favor of God falling, with the ear of the father I don't want you praying amiss. I don't want you to pray and things are not working because you didn't have the boldness to say, Pastor, I'm going to take you at, uh, I'm going to take God at his word and I'm going to let it go. Hear me, people of God, tonight. Forgiveness has to take place in a sacred place. Forgiveness, if you write and write this down, has to take place in a sacred place. It takes us to a place of vulnerability uh, where we can begin to be renewed, to be refreshed, and to be reset. Why? Because we're telling God, I'm not going to resist on letting this go. I'm going to let this go because you got more from me coming. He says, your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you of your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, Neither will your father, which is heaven, will forgive you of your trespasses. I want you to understand tonight as we get ready to close that forgiveness creates forgiveness. That forgiveness begins to refresh us. It begins to renew us. It begins to tell us that, listen, if I can release it and God can release what I have done wrong, it caused me to operate and live in an environment of grace. Forgiveness position us for breakthrough. I want you to hear that tonight, that, uh, that, that forgiveness, forgiveness begins to position me for breakthrough. There are certain breakthroughs in my life that I need to happen, but the only way that I'm going to get to it, if I have the ability to trust God in this season and ask God to allow me to forgive those of the arts that I may have. I don't want you to be offended. I don't want you to be feel betrayed. I, I don't want you to walk with certain things from your past that's keeping you from receiving everything that God has for you. Holy Spirit told me to tell you today that give the gift of forgiveness to yourself first. And once you give the gift of forgiveness to yourself first by saying, 
I need to be healed. I need to let go so I can grow. The thing is going to begin to happen. God is going to begin to expand your destiny. Your borders are about to expand. And God is going to give you grace for the assignment that he's taking you to. Because you know what? There's other people that God is going to place you in contact with that you're going to have to have the ability to forgive also because the level that he's going to take you to. If you can't forgive on this level, certain people at the next level is going to get on your everlasting nerves. They, 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 they gonna, they're going to get on your nerves so bad and you're going have to the, have the power to let go because God wants you to grow. Listen, this is Pastor Andres of Innis Image Worship Center. I believe tonight that this word was a seasonal word for you in this season to give the gift of forgiveness in this season. If you cannot go buy anybody anything else, make the call. Send the text. Ask them if there's an opportunity where we can speak. If, 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 if that never happens, I need you to make a place, a sacred place where you can be vulnerable and that you can begin to release those things so God can begin to heal your life in this season. This is your season to walk in the favor of God because you are a conqueror. Matter of fact, you are more than a conqueror. And the grace of God is upon your life to do great and mighty things in this season. Listen, this is Pastor Andres. I love you. We're out of time. I want to pray for you in this season as we get ready to go. And I pray tonight um, that you will sow into this word. Um, that you can re- write there on the screen, that you can that you can feel free to sow and that you can um, pour into this moment. Sow a seed in this moment, in this word on tonight, because God has given you the ability to forgive and you need to walk in it. You need to know it. You need to you need to receive it because God is going to bless you in this season. God is going to awaken you up to destiny moments because he's causing you, calling you to do great and mighty things, even in this moment now. In the name of Jesus, let us pray tonight. Father, we thank you for everything that you are doing in this moment of our life. We thank you for giving us the ability to trust you. We thank you for giving us the ability to walk by faith and to begin to uphold our hearts and our minds to the things that you have for us in this season. We trust you and we thank you for what you are about to release in the life of every believer. No longer will we allow certain things to say, stay dormant and lay dormant in our life. That we're going to have the power to release and to let go because we understand when we let go, we can receive more. I pray for every gift tonight. I pray, God, as we leave this place, but never from thy eternal presence, that you'll go be with us and be with us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Listen, if you want to connect with our church and be a part of what God is doing in this season, I pray that you will connect with us right there on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, or also on my personal website at um, andreslhopkins.com. Wherever you're viewing from tonight, I pray um, that you will be blessed by the season, and I pray that you will connect with us, um, that you will leave us a message, that you'll tell us how this word has blessed you on tonight, that you understand that God has di- 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 a different dimension for you to walk in, a different dimension of grace for you to walk in in this season as you begin to let certain things go so God can bless you. He don't want you holding on to certain things because it's blockage, it's keeping you from the next move. You, you, you've been praying for a move, sometimes you got to go back and it, it, it's, you got to go back and say, God, I'm going to really let that stuff go. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to nurse it, curse it, or rehearse it. I'm going to begin to let those things go so I can grow in the things of God. So when I stand and pray, I can receive from the Father in the name of Jesus. Listen, I love you tonight. Uh, Listen, I pray that you'll be back with us on Thursday night for our time of corporate prayer entitled Power Boost right here uh, on on our social media uh, platforms. I pray tonight um, that you will be blessed in this season. Let me pray as we get ready to go. God, I pray that you'll bless the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts. That it will be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Keep us from falling. God, keep us. God, allow us to get it right. In the name of Jesus, we pray the word of the Lord that we can have whatsoever we say. When we stand 